Hello, and welcome to my presentation on the Dublin Core Metadata Scheme, what it is, where it's used, and its issues. My name is Valerie Valicento. I created this from my class of Info 281 Metadata for Dr. Boland's class in the summer of 2022. Metadata is just, just basically defined as its data about other data. Um, or data that represents certain properties of a resource according to the semantic structure provided by an externally defined scheme like Dublin Core. Dublin Core metadata scheme is a set of metadata elements designed to make it easier to describe information from the internet, which has been expanded to include other digital and physical resources. Um, Dublin Core metadata innovation says that the Dublin Core style is for the things described by the metadata and for the terms used to describe them. The history of Dublin Core metadata scheme is that it basically began at a meeting between the OCLC and the National Center for Supercomputer Applications. In March of 1995, the meeting was held in Dublin, Ohio, with content specialists, internet technologists, libra and librarians to discuss how to make web resources discoverable. Dublin, Dublin Core was named after Dublin, Ohio, and it was designed to be um, used as a resource which other metadata would be built around. Um, the elements of, met of Dublin Core were designed to be intrinsic, extensible, syntax independent, optional, repeatable, and modifiable. Dublin Core Metadata Innovation was created out of the series of workshops that began after that, that began with that meeting in Dublin, Ohio. It's an organization that supports metadata design and best practices. It's a project from the Associ Association of Information Science and Technology. DCMI's mission is to support shared innovation in metadata design and best practices across a broad range of purposes and business models. If you wish to learn more about them, you can go to DublinCore.org. The Dublin Core elements is defined by the metadata innovation. Um, this list is a list in alphabetical order. It is not a list in which you um, complete uh, an entry. I will go over that in a little bit, but basically it gives you, you, you provide information about the contributor, which is an entity that's responsible for making contributions to the resource. The coverage, which is designed to um, where you give spatial or temporal topic of the resource, um, making it what's applicable to the resource, the jurisdiction under which the resource is relevant. The creator is an entity responsible for making the resource. The date is a point or period of time associated with an event in the life cycle of the resource. That could be um, the date of publication. That could be the date of um, reprinting or anything that applies to that particular resource. The description is, the, is an account of the resource. The format, the file format, the physical medium or dimensions of the resource. Is it a book? Is it a, is it a picture? Is it a scan? That type of information. An identifier, an unambiguous reference to the resource within a given context. It could be the ISBN number. It could be the call number. It could be whatever um, possible identifier that you may have for it. The language, a language of the resource, the publisher, the entity responsible for making the resource available, the relation, a related resource. Is it part of a series? Is it is it part of um, a part of a different another record? The rights, information about the rights held in and over the resource. Is it is it owned by the facility? Is it um, on loan? Is there a license for it? How long is, when does the license start? When does it end? The source, a related source from which the described resource is derived, a website, um, a, uh, is it a 
scan of a painting, something like that. Subject, what's the topic of the resource? The title, the name given to the resource, the type, the nature or genre of the resource. This is an example of a Dublin Core record that I created. I created it from an ebook which I owned um, for a book called APA Seventh Manual Made Easy, a full concise, concise guide simplified for students. Um, I included creator information, subject information. The description I have for the item came directly from the website where I purchased it. The contributor, um, the I put the American Psychology Association because that is the one where it is based from, the date in which it was published, the the type it is, which is a text because it's an elect and the format, it's an electronic book. It, it's in English. Um, the, the publishers have a series of books regarding citation styles. So in relation, it's book one of student citation style series and the rights. Um, since I'm the owner, I put down that I owned it. Now to create that record, I went to um, a particular website, which I've included on the page. On that website, you're asked to fill in information like title, creator, subject, description, publisher, contributor, date, type, format, identifier, source, language, relation, coverage, and rights. It gives you a variety of different options in which you can get your output. You can get it just as a Dublin Core um, record. You can get it as an XML record. You can even ask for even more detailed information. Um, I definitely recommend if you are interested in creating Dublin Core records that you go to the website to see all the different options that you have so you know what you may need when you go to create that record. The strengths of Dublin Core is the it's designed to be tailored to the resource, adding additional lines to each field. So if it's for multiple subjects or if there's more than one author um, or taking fields away. So if you don't need something like relation or if there's no information regarding date or if you don't even or if there's no information for coverage, those are lines that you can remove. Um, Dublin, you know, it all depends on what's the item as well as the needs of the searcher. Depending on the fit location, um, the type of facility, is it a library, is it, an, is it a public library, an academic library, a special library? Is it, it, it's designed for the people that are going to use, the, to search for it. Um, so you put in whatever information that they would need in order to be able to find it. Um, also, you can find Dublin Core terms within other metadata schemes um, like RDF or MODS or METS. Um, sometimes you can find Dublin Core because, like I said, it's designed to be the basics where everything else is um, works around works around it. Um, you may not find Dublin Core in other metadata schemes, but you might. It all depends on what the create what the person creating the record uses. Dublin Core includes three types of metadata, descriptive, administrative, and structural data. Not necessarily all at all at once, De like once again, depending on um, the item as the resource, as well as the searcher. And the searcher for this presentation is for is whoever or whatever is looking for the item, whether that be a person or a machine. The weaknesses of Dublin Core, because Dublin Core is able to be tailored to the item in the searcher, there can be inconsistencies from collection to collection and repository to repository. From Yasser's study, he found five problems. Incorrect values, in other words, elements that contain values that do not, that do not apply to the resource. Incorrect elements, elements that have the correct values but not in the correct element. Missing information. Elements were missing, sometimes to the point where it made the system ineffective. Um, so if you're missing, you know, several items where you may just list the title and the creator, it may not be found. It may require a subject. It may require a description. It may require a date um, in, order to, in order to be found. Information loss. When you convert from one metadata scheme 
to another metadata scheme, not all information may be transferable, may be transferred because it doesn't fit within the new scheme. So if you're transferring it from one record and it and that scheme from one scheme to another scheme, if the information in the one scheme is not needed for the other, it may be lost. Inconsistent values, values that do not give enough accurate of an accurate description for the of the resource, resulting in an ineffective system. So you give it, um, you you may miss misspell a misspell a word, or you may um, put the author first name first instead of last name first or you may um, put the put the date wrong simple minor things can make it inconsistent which would result in it not being found the key to metadata is the goal is making it so that searchers can find it as they search not making it so hard to find that they can't find it the future of dublin core um, the Dublin Core Metadata Innovation Conference. The next one is scheduled for October of 2022. Um, for from the registration page, it looks like they're in 2022. The 20th International Conference on Dublin Core and Metadata Applications is expanding its scope to the whole spectrum of innovation in metadata design, implementation, and best practices, with a special focus on challenges and opportunities in a diverse and data-intensive world. So it looks like um, Dublin Core is also going to start to expand to include more diversity in um, possibly its records or um, elements that it may require. Thank you for your time today. If you have any questions, please let me know. And I hope you all have a great week.